Uh, I thought they were pretty comfortable after the uh, the Joe Allen uh, injury, to be honest. Um, I, I, I was actually on my way back from uh, Lithuania. Oh, of course. Uh, my new boat covering England, of course. Uh, but, so I watched the first half from the Stansted Express on a, on a pretty slow Wi-Fi stream. And then um, the second half I managed to get home for. But, you know, I, like... Once Alan went off, I think, to be honest, Wales kind of bottled it a bit. I mean, you would probably have to say that in terms of quality, even without Bale, they're probably maybe just a better side. In terms of technical ability, maybe just a better side than us now. But they kind of, they, they didn't really show that. Um, and I think it's one thing you have to credit. Our, actually, it's funny. Um, over here, like, we, we play a media five-a-side, six-a-side on a Wednesday afternoon just because of our bizarre hours. And there's two Welsh journalists who play with us. And the bitterness from them is actually ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you know, gonna, oh, you, you, you took, took, took us down to your level by taking out a playmaker, all of this. You know, you'll, you'll get hammered by the next first team you play. But I, I don't think Ireland would because I think a capacity this size has been... Now, I think you can have a lot of justifiable criticisms of O'Neill. But yet, the amount of massive results he's got when it's really come down to is actually... it's. Usually impressive, and to be honest, unprecedented. It probably even trumps Charlton because even with Charlton, those games were usually kind of draws, and ensuring that you know the one-all became the classic result of our history, the, the moral victory. But with O'Neill, the amount of time he's actually gone the next step and got the win, it's it's usually creditable.